is propaganda from the post. Now you might have already had some already. Day of recording today is the 18th of May. On the May 22nd, of course, we have the European elections, where a number of UK parties, of course, want to be buying for seats at the European Brussels table. And I can't say I blame them. The more people we have there, the more good voices talking about the things that affect us in this country, the better. So this, of course, is what's happening this week. So over the course of the last two weeks or so, I've been getting propaganda for the post. Now, of course, they're going whole hog. Isn't it amazing how you never actually see any MPs actually out on the streets when it's not election time? You know, I don't, go, I don't find the ability to be able to talk to them. That you bounce emails to them. You may or may not get a reply. You may get a reply from the House of Commons to say your mail has been received, but you generally don't hear anything beyond that from my experience. Of course, my other experience is actually they have a really good um, communication flow both ways. So maybe I'm just one of those people who ask too many questions that... And they don't really find the kind of questions I'm asking to be completely comfortable to give a straightforward answer of. So anyway, we're going to look at this propaganda and we'll look at the kind of things that they're saying on their pamphlets, which of course are their immediate advertising to the people out there. The most of the people, say in my area here, I, I live in a, in a state basically where you have about 5,000 people. So every one of these 5,000 people has received one of these propaganda pieces about what it is their party represents, of course. There's no negative information on here at all. There's nothing untoward that's gone the wrong way. And actually, uh, looking at these, I think I might actually be missing one from the collection I had, but we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, so the first one I received is this chap here. I'll bring it up on screen uh, in a second. So this guy is Councillor Chris Payne. Never heard of the guy, so who is he? He's the East Midlands MEP candidate for a party that makes no sense when it comes to their information here. It says... An independence from Europe, which is a vote to leave the EU, not a UKIP, con, EU referendum. He wants to, according to the information on here, a no to the HS2, which is the high speed rail line service. And he wants to invest that 100 billion plus into the UK rail and crumbling road networks. Now, of course, those road networks are actually owned by private corporations. They have done over the last year or so, loads of private corporations have indeed bought those roads, and therefore it's under their legislation to actually repair them. Not the government, although the government sort of does, do the road tax system. Very confusing. And they implement full border controls with an Australian-style visa system. Now, of course, fans of that, there's uh, a Border Patrol, um, Australian TV show, like a reality show where they stop illegal immigrants. That's actually got quite a big readership, I was actually quite surprised, a viewership rather. State. It says, stop unlimited immigration. I think I, I do agree with, in fact, because, of course, if there's an unlimited right to walk into every country, soon you're gonna, everyone's going to go to the most popular so, or richest country and quite quickly drain its resources and, it, and its profit there. Not profit, economy. And that is what, kind of what we're seeing. Can't help but uh, address that point, so maybe he's onto the right track here. So it says also to transfer foreign aid to UK citizens in need. Interesting point. We can save 55 million a day from EU membership fees. A vote for independence from Europe. Now, I can't actually work out whether that is the name of the party. You, an independence from Europe. I'm not sure. It appears to be that way, but it doesn't make any sense. Let's see what it says on the back. An independence from Europe, a vote on the 22nd of May 2014 at the top of your ballot paper. Now, an independence from Europe, so yeah, that must be the name of the party. It says it wants to invest in clean coal stations. Well, that doesn't exactly exist now, does it? Uh, nuclear fusion to ensure energy security and stop fuel poverty. I personally would rather invest in thorium, but that's clearly not on the list of this guy's uh, directions where he wants to go. He wants to stop a further $10 billion that it would cost the UK to prop up the euro. Now, we already know that Brussels, of course, has... Basically, an unlimited backdoor into the UK population of pockets of money, as it were. Well, I can get spit my words out. Yeah, they literally can take as much as they want whenever they want. Thank you very much. And Brussels indeed do that. Increase police on the beat and restore law and order. Okay. Provisions for parents to take children on a holiday for 10 days each year during term time. Now, of course, that's been a big thing over the last year, hasn't it? You know, the fact that you're now going to find if you take your child out of school during term time. Unfortunately, the reason the parents do that is because holiday makers and private companies, whether that be a UK holiday company like Pontins or 
Butlins or whatever, just as some prime examples, they will up the costs almost double, almost triple when it's holiday time because more parents have to take their children on holiday. Now we've seen interesting news and revelations going towards the direction that they actually want to have us have only a four or five um, week period for the summer holiday and also have that five week period at Christmas and at a, that's a longer time at Easter as well. Britain's basically having it like the American trimester system. So here uh, it also says they want to deport foreign criminals and illegal immigrants. Okay, British jobs for British workers. Improve pension pro provision for the elderly. Improve flood defence. Of course, that's always going to be a government at the moment. Due to the recent flood that happened not too long ago. Keep the NHS free for British citizens. Now, of course, anyone born in the UK is actually automatically a British citizen. And we do know, I know from my own workplace, where I was presented with a memorandum about two years ago now, where it says that effectively the Polish are out... It, what it actually said was... Um, the birth rate of the Polish actually is almost 8 to 1 uh, Polish to British, so they actually want to invest more in the food industry of that area. That's obviously the area that I work in. Yeah, so yeah, health and benefit tourism. How the independence from Europe can do this, we don't know. Not really. It just says this is what they're promising to do, but no real clear directions on how to do it. I've been to their website. It's not very clear. I have to say it's not. And you'll have a look in a moment. So let's talk about what else is on the, uh, on the pile. We have here from the Liberal Democrats, the Yellow Party. That one's the little free bird on them. Interesting little organisation these are. Got some good friends who happen to be members of uh, Liberal Democrats, working with them in a parliamentary way. And it says UKIP and many Conservatives want to gamble their way millions of jobs out of Britain, out of the EU. They want to put politics before people's livelihoods and our nation's future. UK business leaders like Richard Branson and the heads of manufacturers like Nissan and Ford are horrified of the idea of a UK of an EU exit. A CBLS survey followed eight out of ten businesses uh, say Britain must stay in the EU. So of course, does that mean that eight out of ten businesses are multinational corporations who re rely on the fact that this actually works a bit like a bit of a tax haven for them, and they don't have to pay as much tax because they are a multinational corporation? Um, and of course, this is where they make the most profit because people over here spend much more for the same good amount of goods. With Labour silent on Europe, and only the Liberal Democrats uh, are leading the fight to keep Britain in the EU and protect British jobs. It says here, uh, Liberal Democrat MEP uh, Bill Dutton says the East Midlands benefits hugely from the EU membership and hundreds of thousands of jobs in the region depend on EU funding. That is certainly the case. There's a place where I go to called the New Arts Exchange. They, of course, are funded by the EU. And they do lots of things in regards to uh, culture and society, art exhibitions, and so on. Let's have a look at what we've got coming up in this little uh, propaganda piece here. There's a poster for the window, I guess this could be. Let me have a look. Look at this. Can have a close look on the screen. Bill Newton is Britain's longest serving and most experienced uh, member of the European Parliament. Uh, good stuff. He's been fighting for East Midlands in Europe for over 30 years. Bill knows how to make Europe work for the East Midlands. Positive language. Good stuff. It says, the EU isn't perfect. It needs reform. But over 3 million UK jobs rely on Britain's membership in the EU. UKIP and the Conservatives want us to withdraw and are putting these jobs at risk. In this election, every vote counts. The Lib Democrats uh, have a long-standing experience team uh, who will fight the European elections in the East Midlands. Have you noticed that they always use that language? Why is it always fight? We have to go to war to solve problems. You know, in order to, to solve a problem, let's throw money at it. Let's, let's go to war on it. There's war on drugs. war on terror. Ugh. We're going to fight for this shit. Why can't we be democratic and can't approach something trivium and try to work out what everyone really wants and try and satisfy as many of those as possible and actually come to the most beneficial answer for all of humanity? Ah, oh, gee, that's not going to work, is it? It says down here, back our campaign to back and protect British jobs. A stronger economy, economy and a fairer society. Oh, that's been not to sound quite good. Quite good at their uh, marketing promotion. Let's see what they've got in the back here. That's some more pictures about British jobs and some happy Liberal Democrat voters. Okay, that's what we got next. Right. Uh, only Labour will tackle the, t the cost of the living crisis. Coming up on your screen now. So there's Vote Labour on the 22nd of May. So here that their main focus of their advert is this. Tackling the cost of the living crisis. 
Families across the East Midlands are £1,600 a year worse off under David Cameron. Normal cost of living, like the weekly food shop, paying the gas, electricity, are rising fast. That's true. But instead of helping ordinary families, he gives the tax breaks to millionaires. Uh, Labour will freeze your gas and electricity bills until 2017. Of course, when you mention that, you happen to wipe four billion off the UK economy. Uh, expand free childcare for working parents. I think that's a quite a good thing to do. And but ultimately, who pays for that? Reverse David Cameron's tax breaks for millionaires. Again, that it's worded very specifically in that regards to the fact that Labour's majority of voters are are Labour workers, who are poor paid workers, who are who are struggling. You know, um, on pittance. They really are. I mean, I happen to be one of them. So, but will I be voting Labour? I don't think so. I don't know. Only voting Labour will send a message to this Tory-led government to put hard-working families first. It says they want an economy that works for working people. Labour's job guarantee, this is an interesting one, the currently there is 941,000 14 to 24 year olds out of work in Britain. Now my son's coming up to this age, so this does indeed concern me. Labour is calling on David Cameron to stop wasting time and tackle the European funding on youth unemployment crisis. The scheme which Labour MEPs campaigned hard to introduce will help the jobless people aged 25 in under 25, sorry, into employment. Well, that of course will be under the workfare scheme uh, and obviously low paid training. Uh, we know that that's the case because uh, well, that's what you guys put into place in the first place. Only Labour has a clear plan to get the young unemployed people into work, or sorry, in the East Midlands into work. I live in the East Midlands, if you didn't guess already. Um, a better start for your children. Labour will guarantee 25 hours uh, free childcare every week for working parents aged 3 to 4. Bear in mind those childcare hours, um, whether they be run by a private nursery or whether they be run by uh, yeah, a nursery kind of nursery who does their own house and takes care of your children. It says you can't trust the Tories with the NHS. Oh, really? Gee, I'm pretty sure you were about... You were helping with the privatisation long before these were. The uh, Labour eliminated long waits in A&E, but David Cameron brought them back. The NHS has now lost thousands of nurses and frontline staff, and experts are warning of a crisis. Your chance now is to show David Cameron what you think. So there's no actual challenging the uh, the status quo here. Well, it's just, it's if you blame David Cameron, vote us. If you blame the Conservatives, vote us. Are we forgetting? Are we forgetting that a few years ago, Labour walked out on the entire country? They said they couldn't deal with it. And Gordon Brown, and I watched this live on TV, where Gordon Brown actually drove to the Queen and went, "Fuck this! I'm not doing this anymore." And then quit. The entire party quit. You know, as um, as our government. And then for a little while, there was this kind of like, "Who the fuck is going to be our government? Uh, do do we have a government right now? No." But does that mean actually for that period of time actually it went back to a sovereign country? Well, uh, is she a sovereign? I, I don't know. So, yeah, that's what Labour did for us. Labour just walked out on all these people and uh, says, uh, well, it's not our problem anymore. Uh, so what else can deal with it? And then this thing went back, oh, Conservatives did this. Ridiculous, ridiculous. Talking to the Conservatives, I had two letters, two pamphlets addressed to me. Yeah, the, the other ones were just general through-the-door messages, right? These two were addressed to me. <laughs> okay. I'm certainly on one of their databases, at least. It says, why the EU elections matter? What have we done? The East Midlands team. And what will we do? Ooh, okay. It says there, this year's European elections are the most important in a generation. I do not disagree with that. For the first time since the Eurozone crisis... This is your chance to have Britain's relationship with Europe and have your say in it. Yeah, gee, uh, we're going to have your say in it, but not exactly get a referendum until after you vote in again, come the next general election. People feel the EU is heading in a direction that we've never signed up for, indeed, and it's costing the British taxpayers too much, and we've lost faith in our own affairs. Agreed. The EU needs a fundamental change. I love that word, change. It's the, it's the David Cameron... The, uh, the conservative buzzword, change, big society, big change, and it will come on purpose. Uh, at home, David Cameron and the Conservatives have the most difficult decisions in the national interest to secure Britain's economic future, and now is the time to protect int Britain's interests in Europe. 
I mean, clearly what you've actually all been doing is aligning your own coffers, putting as much money from the public purse into your own private purses and your own private companies and corporations as quick as possible. And then while going, oh, fuck the people! And we've seen it day in, day out. There hasn't been a single day on the news that I've seen in the last three years where politicians aren't screwing the people in very, very bad ways indeed. And we're not talking with a balloon. Both Labour and the Liberal Democrats won't stand up for, for Britain, while UKIP simply can't deliver on anything they promise. <laughs> well, I can't actually bring a UKIP leaflet here to the fray because I haven't had one. It's quite terrible, really. Because I've actually got quite a few friends who appear to be, uh, you know, supporting UKIP. I never actually got a leaflet from them. Um, what you told us and what we did, this is an interesting one, uh, cut the deficit. We cut the deficit by a third. No, you didn't. In fact, the national debt has gone up. It has never been as high as it is today. That, basically, is a flat-out lie. Create more jobs. We've helped businesses create more than 1.6 million new jobs. Yes, in a state of technological unemployment, which was certainly where we're going in the future, and certainly where we are heading right now, um, those 1.6 million new jobs, majority of those, are either false, as, I, as came out in the press a few weeks ago. In fact, most jobs actually don't exist um, that are vacant, as it were. There was the situation where you've given them, give companies a green light to have zero hour contracts, which is where a, an employer will go, huh, yes, we'll take some, we need some people to come and work for us, but we, we want them to work for us when we want them to work for us. And we're not going to give them a timetable either. Workforce scheme is brilliant. It says here, cat welfare. Uh, so we've kept welfare. No out of work household can now claim more than the average family earns in work. Okay, has anyone seen Benefit Street? Hmm? Anyone? Yeah, that's what I thought. Control immigration, this is a good one. Um, so we've taken all action we can under current EU agreements, of course, they're the ones that you set up, uh, to fix our immigration system and limit immigrants' access to benefits. Really? I saw in the paper today, you know, Sunday, where effectively you could pay 500 quid and have some guy set the exam for you to become a British citizen, get your immigration, and instantly get your benefits. Lovely. It says, cut the cost of Europe. We have cut the EU budget, saving British taxpayers 8.15 billion. I haven't seen the details on that, all the data, so I can't comment. Defending Britain's interests. So we vetoed a new EU fiscal treaty because it didn't guarantee a level playing field for British businesses. And that's basically because they want more people in this country, of course, want a higher rate to pay to continue our, you know, our Western way of life. Unfortunately, if you can get an immigrant to do the job cheaper, they will. Because, of course, it's all about the bottom line. It's all about the profit. The more profit you've got in your company, the richer your company is. Unless if you're trading stock market-wise, that's great. Because you don't want costs. You want, basically what you want, you want it to run for free and earn as much profit as possible using more faster, more efficient systems. It's a shame we don't have any efficient systems in there. We have a very anti-economy uh, in place here. Britain needs people f on the ground fighting our corner in Brussels. I do agree with this. Now is the chance to secure real change in Europe. Yes, let's go on a bit of a uh, Solinsky there. Uh, we stand for bringing power back in Britain and away from Brussels, but only with your support and a strong team of Conservative MEPs can we deliver real change. Yes, of course, we want you to uh, tie up those deals really nicely and are fucking over and privatising our country. Both Labour and the Democrat, Liberal Democrats won't stand up for Britain while UKIP simply cannot deliver on anything they promise. It says, what we promise to do here, keep our border controls and cracking down on benefit tourism, Securing more trade, but not an ever-closing union. Take back controls of justice and home affairs. Yeah, it would be nice to have uh, the UK courts being the highest court uh, around, as opposed to going to the European Courts of Human Rights and the European Court of Justice. You're getting a fairer deal for British taxpayers. Well, the taxpayers have to pay, and of course, MPs, whoever they are, will benefit heavily from that. What, and the only reason, of course, they ever want to pay any money back is to get caught at it. And do you remember, of course, there was that whole thing where the MEP's expenses scandal came out, and they had to, and they went, oh, we'll pay, we'll pay, oh, we're really sorry. And then, like, after about six months later, we paid it all back to them. 
Can you believe that? We really did that, by the way. We really did. We did paint all back to them. And then you get the final decision of British membership in the EU in an in and out referendum at the end of 2017 if we're elected. Our long term economic plan. Our plan delivers a stronger, more competitive economy and secures a better future for Britain by reducing the deficit so we deal with our debts, safeguard our economy for the long term, keep mortgage, mortgage and death grip taxes low, um, cutting income tax and freezing fuel duty for hard working people, creating more jobs, backing small businesses, of course, with workplace games, uh, capping welfare and reducing immigration. No, that's not going to happen now, is it? Because, of course, uh, when you have people come into the country, they're actually worth stock value. The so obviously, I've just I've just ran down this and ranted about this and read this shit. But what about you? Are you gonna Are you gonna vote for Europe? Are you gonna vote in Europe Five for our four key, three key parties? UKIP. I'm not sure, they they're real stances. They're all anti Europe this, anti Europe that, and we need to get out of stuff. Yet it appears that they can't seem to stop fucking themselves over in the press. Well, of course, that could be the press uh, under instruction from current political parties in power to not cause the earthquake in British politics, which, arguably, we do need. We need a big shake-up in British politics. We also have people who are experienced and know how the political system works, because they're also, while they may be corrupt themselves, they're also dealing with people who are also corrupt. And we all know what that leads to. No one, and no progress, ever, ever happens. And there is, of course, other company, parties too. And the Green Party out there, they're doing quite well. Of course, Facebook has taken the stance when it comes to uh, the Green Party. It appears that no one can actually share any links of their website. Very weird. You know how you, if you post a post link on, uh, onto Facebook, if Facebook allows it, it says OK, as it were, uh, you'll see a preview pic of the, uh, the website or the image or the graphic come up along with the link and some text. Anything from the Green Party doesn't happen. Does not happen. Very strange. Is this Facebook taking another political stance once again? Who knows? Maybe. Looks like it. And you have the other parties as well. You have the Pirate Party. You have the British National Party. Britain First doing their little thing as well. Although they appear to be reformed from the, um, the EDL and the BMP. I, honestly, I don't know too much about their policies uh, in order to go into them. These were just kind of covering the main ones. I do apologise. You know, I, it'd be great to hear what you guys have to say as well. What other parties are we going out there? The way I'm going to vote, the way I'm leaning towards it, I don't know. I don't want to vote for any of these, because I don't believe this political system works. I just don't, it, it just doesn't work for me, it doesn't work for anyone. The only people that actually appear to benefit are those who appear to be profiteering and privateering our country into, into corporate hands. That appears to be the only thing happening. Whichever the admin team that is in power, whoever is there, who is in, who's in structure, who's the one making decisions that affect other people, appear to be the ones who are there for their own interests. And when you're seeing the fact that you've got you know, political and public interests, you know, but then they say there's no conflict of interest. I mean, that's just diabolical, because you're seeing so that uh, is the case. It's like, say, Theresa May, for instance, and her husband runs G4S. G4S has got all the government contracts for security. Well, of course they have. <laughs> and these kind of things really piss me off, and they surely piss you off as well. So, do I vote for none of the above? Do I spoil the ballot paper? Do I just go, fuck this shit? Do I not go and bother to vote at all? I think it is important we go and vote. I just think there should be another option. And the box at the bottom where it says, I vote for none of the above. What are your, what are your thoughts? What are your views? Let me know. Let me know the, uh, the comments below. Send me a tweet. Uh, define Christian. Uh, hey, you know who I am. Follow me on Facebook. I'll be here. Follow me on Google+.